So you just got yourself a brand new throttle or joystick from Verpal or a similar manufacturer. You plug it in, you're eager to set it up and half of the buttons are not picking up in Elite. They just outright don't work. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong with your device. Today I'm going to show you how to fix that. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or phone. Not only that, but you also get on-screen information about your ship, your targets and the world around you. So gone are the days where you have no more room for your key bindings or you have to alt tap out of the game to look up market data. On top of that, Game Glass also works with Star Citizens, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shards and features, you can buy them individually or you can subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTEA on checkout and get 5% off your first purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. So today we're going to fix your broken buttons on your brand new Verpal device. Uh, this could be, for instance, I'm going to be running this on a CM2 that I have here right next to me. I'm going to be using as an example, but this will work with pretty much any manufacturer of devices. There might be a few steps in here that are different, but it's pretty much just here in the beginning. If you have a Verpal device, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the VPC configuration tool. This you can download from Verpal's own homepage. And this is just to calibrate your device, to get it set up, to get to make sure we got the right firmware on it and all that stuff. I've got already set up mine, but I'm just going to show you the steps. What you're going to do is, first of all, make sure this is not set to light, but this is set to pro. This is going to help you a lot later. And also make sure before you fire up the software that you only have one um, verbal device plugged in to your computer when you start the software. It's going to send you a warning message if you have more than one. So just one. If you have a problem with multiple devices, just do this twice, once for each device. So I'm going to pick up my uh, throttle from up here. It says here it is a CM2 throttle, as you can see here. First, I'm going to head down here to the Profiles menu, and I'm going to select the base of my throttle. In my case, this is this one here. Um, if you have any uh, grip or modifications, for instance, that could be the little, like, I'm going to set this to uh, like whatever you have uh, on, the, on the side of the throttle. Put that in there, and then I'm just going to click Create New Profile. This is going to load the new profile onto the uh, to the device, and we can then go ahead and configure it. Once the new profile has been loaded and been re-imported into, it should do this all automatically. Just give it a few seconds. We now go ahead and you can like change the LED colors if if you want to do that. But more importantly, we can go over here to the buttons, and you can now begin set basically just like smashing buttons on your on your new whole test. And you can see they should each light up here with different colors on the menu down here. And this is an easy way for you to verify that in fact every single input on this is working. So if you're in doubt whether there's a broken wire or something in there, then um, then you can go in here and verify it. If you have an input that does not light up when you press it here just light up in here, then you do have a broken input and then you need to get in contact with the uh, with verbal support to get them to fix it. But I've never heard of that being the issue. It's much more likely it's the next thing we'll go and look. But first, we just quickly want to show you how to calibrate the axis because we create a new profile, so we need to do that. So go over here to the axis, click on calibrate axis, and you can see these are jumping all over the place. So just take every single analog input that you have and just like move the throttle all the way down and all the way up so that the software knows what the ranges are for your device. I'm just going to do this for all my inputs and you can see as I do so they all fall to rest and now they should reach max as the whatever slider leads max and mean where it reach mean, which it does, so that's nice. Once you're done with that, just click calib uh, save calibration to profile. That's going to write your new calibration and your device is now calibrated. So now I just want to show you why Elite is not picking up your devices. And that's because it's using the Windows built-in like device uh, detection, like uh, game controller, basically. You can see here, I have a VJoy here. We're going to come back to that in a second. But we're going to go and take the, um, the CM2, which I have here. And if I click Properties, we get the Windows um, panel up. And now again, I can move my axis around and I can verify that that everything is working. But you will most likely notice there are only 32 inputs. And that's the problem. The Windows controller only supports up to 32 inputs per device. This is grossly outdated and there are more modern ways of doing this, uh, which is used in games like, I know, um, Squadron, for instance, can definitely support more than 32. I think it supports up to 128 inputs per device, which should be more than enough for anything that you have. So. That's why it's it's not working basically because it's using Elite is using this Windows built-in thing to detect inputs, 
and they only support to 32 devices or 32 button, button inputs per device. So let's go ahead and let's fix that. Now to do that, you're gonna need a piece of software. It's gonna need two pieces of software, one called Joystick Gremlin, and the other one, if we head over here to the quick start guide, is gonna be VJoy. So we can click VJoy here. It's gonna send us to the download page and you can similarly click Joystick Gremlin here and it's also gonna send you to the download page of that. So get the latest version and install VJoy first and then install Joystick Gremlin afterwards. Once both has been installed, you can go down here and we can go and search up VJoy. And what you're looking for is the one called Configure Weed VJoy. There are multiple different software packages included in this. You just need the one called Configure VJoy. So we're gonna open that up. What VJoy does is it allows you to create virtual joysticks. Now, we know that the first 32 buttons are already working on the device. And the device I have, for instance, has 60 button inputs. So that means I'm only 30 inputs short and I can have 32 per device. So I just need one additional device. So depending on how many inputs you have on your device, you might need two or three if you have a lot of inputs. But normally, if you just need one, that should be sufficient. So you go in here and I'm just going to deselect the axis because the axis are already working. There's no reason for me to move those over. So just deselect those. And I need 30 additional inputs. I can keep it at 32 just to max it out anyway. If you need more devices, you can yeah, remember to click apply down here <laughs> before you move on. And if you need more devices, just click over here to the next tab and click add device. And you can do that with up to 16 virtual joysticks. That should be more than enough for anybody's need. So in my case, I just need the one. But again, if you need, you can just go ahead and just add as many as you like here. So we're going to open up Joystick Gremlin now, and we're just going to make sure we click New Profile, and then we're just going to save the profile. I'm just going to call this one for Demo. You can see I have a profile here I made when I was testing this. But we're just going to call this Demo and save that. Now you can see here that it has already picked up the CM2 throttle here, and we can see we have all the different buttons here. And if you click a button, if I click this one, for instance, this is button 4, that one is button one. You can see it highlights the buttons as I'm clicking them. So it makes it a little bit easier to identify. So if you have a specific button that doesn't work, you can go in here, just click it, and it will highlight that button um, that's not working. So this was 38. Now you can see this one. In my case, I set this up with the mode dial. So I have all the way up to, uh, to 79. But dependent on how you set up your mode dial, you might only have 60, but that's just fine. You really only need up to the 60 inputs. We know that bottom one, button one to 32 is already working. So there's no reason to do anything to those. We're just gonna keep those where they are. Then we're gonna go down to 33, which is the first button that is not working. Make sure this is set to remap and we're gonna click add. So you can see here it automatically maps this over to the VJoy device one um, and the first button. Perfect. Click on the next one and click add. Click on the next one and click add. You can see it automatically increments this to the next one and the next one and it just keeps going. And it, you mean, you, you, you get the idea now. Use. Okay, there we go. I have now mapped all the way up to 64. I was all the buttons that I could map, of course. If I had more devices, I would just click add here and then I would have additional devices in this drop down menu and then I could select what button on that device I wanted to remap to. But we only have one virtual device. Now there's still a lot going over here. You can if you want to. I could if I have selected axes on the virtual joystick, I could map those over there and then I could sit over here in the virtual device and I could do like uh, responsive curves and all that stuff. So now that we mapped all the, the buttons that are not working over to our virtual device, we can go ahead and click the little play icon here in the corner, like so. And you can see now it says running and active mode default. Now that we are back in Elite, we can head into our control settings. Let's just go into, I don't know, weapons, for instance. And now you should be able to use the different um, key inputs that you couldn't use before. So for instance, I had one there called Joy6. And if I can find, see what is Joy6 on the other device. There we go. So you can see here, I now have joysticks mapped to two different things, but that's because one of the joysticks is on the virtual device and the other one is on the verbal device. So even though I shouldn't be able to, uh, to have the same thing um, bound to two of them, you can see if I try to do that, it says I can't do it because it's already bound to something else. But this is because it did just named the same because the sixth input on a joystick. It's just the way uh, Elite names them. So now you can see that's working. So now you should have all the different key inputs working in Elite. And you can now go ahead and set up your key bindings as you wish.
that's it. Pretty straightforward. I hope this helped you. If it did, do give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.